The last thing that we're going to look at is what causes an acid to become stronger or weaker. Now, the nice thing about the Bronsted Lowry acid base theory is that it actually looks at the structure of the acid. And so we can start to talk about what's changing in the structure. Why is it becoming stronger or weaker? Now, in order to understand this, we have to kind of think of this in a weird way. All right. It's going to be a little bit uncomfortable at the beginning, but once you kind of click, it'll make sense. When we talk about an acid strength, what we're saying is, here's an acid species. How willing is it to give away a hydrogen plus? If it doesn't want to give away a hydrogen plus, it will become a weak acid. In contrast, if it's okay or it likes to give away hydrogen plus, it is going to be a strong acid. In that process of giving away hydrogen plus, the structure changes. The acid changes into the structure of its conjugate base. One of the things that we notice when we compare a conjugate base to its related acid, its original acid, is that the electrons, the number of electrons in these two species stays the same while the structure changes. In fact, the acid will have more atoms because of one additional hydrogen than the conjugate base. And so we'll have more atoms in the acid with the same number of electrons. So the electrons will be spread out more. Their density will be lower. When the acid gives away hydrogen plus, the density of the electron increases. They're squeezed into a smaller area. This generally is not a great thing because electrons have negative charges. And when we squeeze them into a smaller area, they repel. So what we want to look for is things that are going to help, help hold that increased electron density, making it more stable, okay? So that the conjugate acid, I'm sorry, the conjugate base is still relatively stable, still has a relatively lower potential energy. So let's look at these factors. These are in order of importance. First thing we see is that there are series of acids, for example, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, hydrogen iodide, where the hydrogen is specifically attached to an atom that's in one column of the periodic table. So we have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine going down that column. One of the characteristics of these atoms as we move down the column is that their size increases. So an iodine atom is much larger than a fluorine atom. Now, if we take a hydrogen away, we get a fluoride minus. In that case, now that minus charge, that extra electron density, has to be concentrated on that really tiny fluorine atom. That's going to give it a really high potential energy. So you know what? It's not going to want to become a fluoride ion. It's going to want to stay as hydrogen fluoride, which is going to make it a relatively weak acid. In contrast, when we go to atoms like chlorine, bromine, and especially iodine, these atoms are very large. So when we put extra electrons on it, it can spread out in a large area of space and become much more stable. So what we see is down a column, if we're comparing an acidic atom, in other words, an atom that has a hydrogen attached, in the same column, the larger that atom becomes, the stronger the acid. This, in fact, is in the opposite direction of the trend of electronegativity. So we see that atom size has a bigger effect than electronegativity when we compare down columns. We can also look at atoms across a row. And when we look at that, we can see that across a row, as we go from carbon to the right to nitrogen, again to oxygen, again to fluorine, we can see that the electronegativity is increasing. In this case, what we see is that 
as the electronegativity increases, but the size stays relatively similar, having that increased electron density, uh, sorry, the electron density stays roughly the same, but then we put it on atoms that want electrons more, right? That's what electric negativity means. And so the conjugate base becomes more stable as the electronegativity increases when we're comparing an acidic atom across a row. And so we can see that carbon atoms are really weak acids. Their pKa, remember we can substitute, so CH4 is here, but CH3, CH3 would be about the same and so forth. These are very weak acids. Nitrogen atoms, when they're neutral, are not very strong. Oxygen atoms are stronger, and then finally, fluoride ion is much stronger. The next consideration is the hybridization of the acidic atom. This is especially important in carbon compounds. So if we look at CH4 and we compare it to this molecule where we have a hydrogen attached to a triple bonded carbon, what we can see is that in CH4, that CH bond the carbon is sp3 hybridized. So when we break the bond, those electrons are going to go into an sp3 hybridized orbital. That orbital exists largely far away from the nucleus. The electrons are going to be stabilized by the nucleus. So as that bond becomes, uh, sorry, as that orbital becomes longer, it's harder for the nucleus to stabilize those electrons. So they're going to be much less stable the pKa will be lower. The acid won't want to give away the hydrogen because it won't be able to stabilize the electrons. In contrast, when we look at this, that pair of electrons is going to go into an sp hybrid orbitals, which is 50% s, which means that that orbital is much closer to the nucleus. So now those electrons can be stabilized. So we see that by increasing the percent of s character in the CH bond, we make that bond a stronger acid. The next factor to consider is resonance. Resonance spreads electron density out over multiple atoms in a molecule. And so that is going to help that conjugate base become more stable. Here's an example. This is CH3, CH2OH, ethanol. We can take the hydrogen off of ethanol. When we do that, we get CH3CH2O minus, and that has no resonance. All of the electron density is centered on that oxygen. In contrast, when we look at CH3C double bond O, OH, we can take that electron off of the OH, but now the O minus can do resonance. I'm going to show you that down here since I just took these off of here. Here is the structure of the conjugate base when we deprotonate ethanol. We get this pair of electrons, get stuck on that oxygen, has a high electron density, a lot of repulsive forces, high potential energy. In contrast here, this is the structure of the conjugate base of acetic acid. We took the hydrogen off, we get a pair of electrons here, similar to that, but now these electrons can move around inside the molecule and spread out onto the other oxygen. So what we get is the extra electron density is about half what it would be right here. That's gonna make this more stable. That's gonna make its acid stronger. The next factor is what we call inductive withdrawing groups, which also help spread electrons out in the molecule. They do that using bond polarity. When we talked about bond polarity, we talked about how um, in a polar bond, the electrons are shifted toward the more electronegative atom. This is called inductive withdrawing, when we pull electrons through single bonds. What we can do is we can take an acid, like acetic acid, where we have three hydrogens here on the carbon, and replace those hydrogens with chlorines. What that is going to do then is 
in our conjugate base, where we have electron density in this region, those chlorines are going to pull electrons away from this carbon, which will then get a positive charge, partial positive charge, which will then pull electrons out of this region and spread them into a larger area of space. That reduces the electron density, it decreases the repulsive forces, and it causes this ion to become more stable than that ion. So therefore, this acid will become stronger than that acid. Finally then, we run into a really interesting situation. We have some acids where the acidic atom is the same, which means it has the same size, same electronegativity. The bonding is the same, same hybridization. There's no resonance. There's no inductive withdrawing. And yet, the acids are not the same strength. This generally occurs because the acids have a different number of atoms attached. For example, I'm uh, sorry, different number of atoms attached to the acidic atom. For example, this oxygen has two hydrogens, whereas this oxygen has three hydrogens. This gives them charges. And what we see is when the acid has a positive charge, if it gives away a hydrogen plus, it becomes neutral. That's a much more beneficial change than having uh, uh, an acid which is neutral. It gives away a positive charge, now it becomes negative. Now it wants to attract that positive charge back. So the positively charged acid will be stronger than the neutral acid when we compare them. In our homework and, and, and our exams, you're going to be given pairs of acids plus a pKa table, and you're going to be asked to predict which acid would be stronger and to use these factors to explain why. This concludes our lecture on acids and bases.